Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to rip a DVD in Handbrake. Of course it's important only to rip a DVD that you've purchased and not to share the resulting file on the internet. This is a wider tutorial on how to create a recut trailer. You can watch the first part of the tutorial which is about the conventions of movie trailers here and the third part of the tutorial which is about using Final Cut here. Now let's get into it. First up you need to insert the DVD into your computer. Once you've done that you can launch Handbrake. Uh, now when you launch Handbrake it comes up with a dialog box asking you uh, where the disc is located. Uh, just select the DVD and hit open. What Handbrake does now is searches the DVD for the titles and chapters on the disc. Um, first up, um, before I go any further, what I'm going to do is name um, this particular file. You can also click on the browse button to find a location to save it. I'm going to call this Night of the Living Dead. Okay, um, now the title menu determines which title on the DVD you're going to rip. Um, now when you go to this menu, it'll show all of the uh, video clips that are actually on the DVD. By default, Handbrake will pick what it thinks is the um, feature on the DVD. Um, if it doesn't, you can just go to this menu and change it. Now you may be wondering how you know which number title um, the feature film is. Well, you can work it out in a number of different ways. Um, first of all, you can look at the length um, of the clip that you're ripping and if it sort of corresponds to the length of the movie then that's probably the one you're after. Also you can click on um, picture settings and what that does is brings up a little overlay um, which tells you the width and height of the clip uh, among other things and you click on the preview button here and what that does is shows you um, some stills um, from that particular title and of course if it's the one you're after um, you're good to go. The other way you can work out which number title you're after is by launching a DVD player. Now in Apple's DVD application, um, if you go to the controller and click on title a couple of times, it'll actually bring up um, the number of the title that you're currently watching. Um, so if there are a, a large number of videos on the, that particular DVD, you can work out precisely which one um, you need to rip. Of course, one of the nice features of Handbrake is its ability to rip particular chapters of a film. And if you look over here, you'll notice that you can select particular chapters um, rather than uh, ripping the entire film, which can be really handy. Handbrake also allows you to choose from two different formats. Um, you've got MP4 and MKV. Um, I found it's best to stick to MP4. Uh, MKV is a container format that allows you to include subtitles, but it's also possible to put subtitles in the actual footage of the MP4. The next most important question is usually what video codec and bitrate you should use. I'm a fan of um, H.264 um, and I just stick to that. As far as bitrate goes, this is probably one of the most important and contentious um, issues in Handbrake. I generally set the bitrate between 1500 and 2000 because I think it strikes a nice balance between um, quality and file size. You can go as low as um, 1000 kilobytes per second if you're stretched for disk space, um, but once you hit that po point you start to see compression artifacts turning up in the footage. It's also possible to change the audio settings. Um, I usually leave this at its um, default. Uh, if you go to this drop-down menu, you'll, you'll, you'll notice with this particular DVD, I can select from mono or stereo. Um, on other DVDs, you can uh, choose um, Dolby, surround sound, that sort of thing. Um, I generally leave this um, at its defaults. Uh, with subtitles, you'll notice that um, you can select subtitle tracks from the DVD. And when you do that, uh, you'll notice by default Handbrake checks the burned in option and what this does is put the subtitles into the actual footage of the film um, and which is quite handy because I very rarely watch um, foreign films with the subtitles turned off. Now if you click on this tab you'll see all of the advanced settings uh, if you want to mess with that go ahead uh, they just look kinda scary to me. Uh, I'm going to click on the video tab here and you'll notice in the sidebar over here there are a number of different presets. So let's say you've bought a DVD and you want to watch it on your iPad, you can select the appropriate format here. Clicking on the picture settings brings up an overlay which shows you the dimensions of the uh, video file that you're importing. Um, I guess one of the important things here is if you click on filter it provides a number of decomb and deinterlace settings. 
Um, so if you ever click on the preview button and you notice that the edges of moving objects are jagged, um, you're suffering from interlacing. And the best way to deal with this is to turn decombing on. The difference between decombing and deinterlacing is that decombing only deinterlaces frames that show visible combing. Deinterlacing can sometimes reduce the picture quality of a um, progressive film, so make sure it's not turned on all the time. If you'd like more information, um, there's a wonderful article about decombing at the Handbrake website. One of the nice features of Handbrake is its ability to create a work queue. This is useful when ripping television programs, for example, because you can select an episode, add it to the work queue, um, select another episode, add it to the queue again, and so on. Uh, when you click Start, um, the button will rip the titles that you've added to the queue. Okay, now that you've got the video audio settings right, um, you've maybe put in some subtitles, it's time to start ripping the DVD, so you can hit the start button and go grab a cup of coffee. Thanks for watching. If you've got a question, feel free to send me a message. Don't forget to rate and comment.